So this Halo game just turned 14 years old. Most of you probably already know where I'm going with this. It's a game that, well, at the time was definitely lambasted, certainly had its flaws and people definitely let it be known online for sure. And sometimes it's actually kind of held as like the game that kind of started the downfall of Halo. And it definitely started to be the Halo game that actually started to follow trends more than any other Halo game previously. But it's gone through the full Halo cycle of being hated, then remembered, now fully loved. So I thought on the 14th anniversary of this game, it'd be worth the time to remember the fondness of it and what made it not so great at the same time. That game I'm talking about, Halo Reach. Yeah, I know they're not holding their weapons, but it's kind of a pain to put it back on. So um, deal with that, George is missing his right hand. So Halo Reach is a game I feel like it suffers from the need to change and innovate so then people don't accuse it of just being a 0.5 version of this predecessor. So Halo Reach was a game at the time when I first played through it way back in 2010, 14 years ago. I was not really the biggest fan, especially of the campaign. I thought the campaign was kind of bland. I didn't really connect with the characters. I thought the multiplayer was a complete mess at the time. I didn't care for Firefight one bit. And yet, I still played the game. So in this video, I wanted to go through all the major parts of Halo Reach, right? The campaign, the multiplayer, the armor customization we still wish we had to this day, the UI and just the community as a whole and how the game fits within the history of the Halo franchise. If you guys enjoyed these type of videos, like and subscribe is always appreciated, but let's get right into those details. So first I want to talk about the campaign. This is one of the most rememberable parts about this game. Probably the aspect of Reach that people remember fondly now. But at the time I didn't really find myself enjoying the campaign that much. I think maybe just because I didn't really feel that invested with the characters, uh, especially since they all died. Spoiler alert, I know, but it's 14 years old at this point, guys, come on. And I will say that the story following up from the original trilogy to come with this story felt small much smaller, less impactful, and didn't really feel like it led to something greater like all the previous Halo games did. Reach's campaign is a self-contained story of just action, survival, and ultimately loss. I will say that the characters within the Noble team, right, George, Carter, Kat, Emil, June, and yourself, Noble Six, felt very much like one-dimensional characters, right? Like, I'm the big tough guy who has a big heart. I'm the leader guy and stuff like that. And I'm the badass guy who's kind of the, against the crowd, but I follow along anyways. So for the characters, I never really found myself getting like too invested with them. And they really felt like I attached with them because they were just like one dimensional so much. We did get a little bit of backstory right between Kat and Carter, that whole dynamic and stuff like that. But there really wasn't much about Halo Reach's characters that made me really attached to them. Unlike what happened with the original trilogy, like this, game really just lives in the shadow of the original trilogy. And so when I first played Reach, I was looking for that connection with like Master Chief or the connection with someone like a Sergeant Johnson or interesting kind of quirkiness that like 343 Guilty Spark brings. There wasn't really any of that within the campaign. It really did feel like most of the characters within the story filled a role to progress the story forward, if, they, if you know what I mean. But as time has passed, I've actually come to enjoy the story of Reach and the characters involved with Reach quite a bit more now. Understand that like it's a different style of storytelling. It's not supposed to be the same style as the original trilogy. It's something different. And different is certainly what Reach brings to Halo. More on that when we talk about the gameplay. But the storytelling of Reach actually had some controversy as well. As we know, The Fall of Reach, the novel that was released back when Halo CE first came out, we kind of expected to play out those events that happened in the book in the game, but that's not the case at all. It's left a lot of people who are big lore fans pretty much in the dust and felt kind of jaded about the story of Halo Reach. But as someone who read The Fall of Reach and played Reach as well multiple times through, it doesn't really bother me a whole lot. I kind of honestly view the games as something separate and the books is kind of more like extended little like sprinkles on top of like a ice cream sundae. Now to look at Halo Reach's campaign as a whole, like what was the gameplay experience like? I have actually kind of gone back in my original thoughts thinking that the gameplay was kind of bland, not that exciting or whatever to now feeling like it was Bungie's most fully realized campaign experience 
they have ever made. Now what I mean by fully realized is that you can tell by playing Halo Reach's campaign that there aren't like really major sections that they have to like reuse assets or things that kind of don't make sense within the experience of playing. It all just kind of follows a consecutive narrative and there really isn't like these massive leaps and jumps that we've seen in previous Halo games. Like for Halo 2 for example with that cliffhanger ending which they completely cut out the third act of the game just to get it out in time. But in Halo 3 there were certainly sections where you had to double back on the same mission you just played right and there were also notably cut levels like the 08 Force mission where you actually fight against a Guardian. Mastermind modder rejected shotgun was able to recreate this which is actually supposed to reuse the assets of the level guardian that was in the multiplayer that always kind of felt like that level stood out because it was actually a cut mission that was supposed to fight against a guardian and they recreated the best they could with the mod tools and the assets that they had and so this is one of those things where you can tell that like yeah and even in halo 3 even though basically they were just trying to recreate the third act of halo 2 and of course a little bit beyond that as well that they still had constraints and parts that they had to just completely cut out or remove. Halo Reach was certainly not unfamiliar with cut content, one being like space battles here. This was supposed to be kind of like a multiplayer, I think, mission that they tried to recreate within Halo Reach and just didn't quite exactly work out how they wanted it to be. Uh, they also had like watercraft and stuff like that. That's something they've been working on for the longest time within Halo, just could not quite get it ready to work. And most notably, I think the mission I think we all wish we could have ever had, or at least for multiplayer mode, Global Battles, which was supposed to be, I think, more like a PvE kind of experience, but on a large scale with very cinematic and just explosions and just large scale battles, which was something that would be amazing, but didn't quite make its way into the game. But most of the cut stuff is just kind of like multiplayer things that they were testing out or different mechanics that didn't quite make it. We didn't really come across that when it comes to like the campaign levels, right? Each level is a gigantic set piece that's a unique experience the whole way through. Nothing really repeats. Everything seems different and new and exciting to play. I would say the Halo Reaches campaign is probably the most replayable campaign out of all the Halo campaigns. Bungie was able to achieve their full vision that they wanted of Reach. And that's why I say that it's the most fully realized campaign Bungie has ever put together, even beyond with like the Destiny series. Like the mission Tip of the Spear, dude, that is a mission I've played so many times over and I could never get tired of playing it. It is one of the best missions ever created in the Halo franchise. Now you know when it comes to Reach we have to talk about the multiplayer side of things but the multiplayer in this game is so massive we have to break it down in multiple parts so I want to start with one of the things I think it's so underappreciated about the multiplayer experience of Halo Reach and that's the UI which just looking at this menu just the menu screen first starting out you're like dude this is just such a vibe that matches it. it's just a PNG it's honestly one of the more like entertaining uh, backdrops to look at, you know, it's something that's so cool. And then also vertical menus are not just like super stacked, you have to scroll past everything. You want to play some standard Halo? Well, we got that. You got Slayer, SWAT, Snipers, Living Dead, and Invasion. Invasion, we'll talk about a little bit later because how, how great that mode is. But what I'm saying is like you could just see this and you can just click on whatever you want and it drops a sub menu within that menu to be able to grab what you want. Compare that to Halo Infinite here where it's just kind of like a, just a series of boxes, right? It doesn't really look that visually appealing, especially when you go on the multiplayer side of things. Like when you gotta find what you want to play, say, I don't know, Team Slayer, your initial look right here of like all these game modes, you actually just can't find you actually just scroll down quite a bit wait right oh no it's in quick play that's right and you have to go into this menu and then select the modes and here to through all what 40 some odd menu 22 of them i could actually trim it down from 40 something previously uh to be able to play slayer oh and how about a stats page right like just a page that lets you keep track of like your experience with the campaign multiplayer firefight campaign you can look at how many kills you got, your accuracy, all that kind of stuff. Man, the things that we lost in the current generation of gaming. But how about the multiplayer menu screen, right? When you're searching for a lobby and you find people, you can actually check out within the game itself, but like what kind of Spartan they have, what their stats are, what kind of level they are to kind of understand like, who am I playing against, right? If I came across someone like looking like this, right? I'd be like, okay, 
there are basic level sparring, right? They haven't really played a whole lot or whatever, you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, but, like, you can see, like, their stats of how much they completed, right? Overall completions there. And just, like, their overall visuals. And then, of course, you also had the voice chat mixed into that whole thing as well. You can actually, like, talk with people in pre-game lobbies and stuff on the other team. That's just fun. And how about just the customization menus here, man? Like, Reach definitely could have been improved as say when it comes to the UI, but like vertical menus, then you'd be able to kind of just scroll down the list of stuff that you have to understand like what kind of stuff you can put onto your helmet, right? And all that kind of stuff. Where like in Infinite, it's kind of like this whole side scrolling thing. I think we just need to completely move ourselves away from. It gets so difficult to kind of find exactly what you're looking for. I feel like in reach, yeah, definitely could have been improved. I would like to see more items on the screen for sure. But at least like it made sense to kind of scroll through it. And how about this for customization of multiplayer character, right? Vertical menus. Oh my gosh. I can just go through, see everything on my screen, what I can select and change. Go to that and change it. Unlike in Halo Infinite, where I have to constantly keep scrolling around to hopefully find what I might be able to customize. And yeah, the UI, I think, for being able to choose your emblem could certainly have been improved a little bit more easy to find the spectrum of things that you have. But the fact is, is here that you can choose your emblem, your emblem, your backdrop and your primary secondary colors. Oh my God, what we are still missing to this day. Also just the post game press X to match up with people. Like, dude, that was amazing. That was a great way to forge bonds with people within the game, create rivalries, meet friends and stuff like that. You found someone that you actually find fun to chat with and you know can interact with online. Press X to match up and that's all you need to do. I know a lot of people like to talk about like the things you can do in the game as like the campaign, multiplayer, firefight, all that stuff. But really like the UI is there to help facilitate that they bind that all together. And if the UI doesn't truly work in the best way it possibly can, these will all feel like segmented little islands and the UI is there to kind of bind it all together and Reach absolutely does that. Okay, let's talk about just the core gameplay experience of the multiplayer, right? Well. This is where I feel like Bungie kind of had to make a lot of significant changes to the game to make it so then people wouldn't be upset that you're just releasing Halo 3.5 because I feel like, because in my opinion, Halo 3 is the peak experience of what the multiplayer of Halo should be. I feel like Bungie took the learnings of Halo Combat Evolved and Halo 2 and then evolved that, no pun intended, into Halo 3 and I think a lot of people agree that that's the best multiplayer you can tell by just playing anything on the MCC right now, Halo 3 is clearly the most popular multiplayer. But back in 2008 or 7 when they started developing Halo Reach, right, you couldn't just release a new version of Halo 3 because back then you had to drastically make a new game to make it feel like it's something fresh, new experience because if they just took Halo 3's gameplay and added some more maps, some more equipment, maybe some more weapons here and there and stuff like that, but the battle rifle still the main weapon to utilize and things like that. Maybe there's no sprint or in the game. People will just be asking like, oh, you just made Halo 3.5. Why are you charging me $60 for that? I mean, I can just go play Halo 3. Call of Duty was starting to get into this realm of people being a little tired of the formula. Like even though it was still a relatively newer experience at the time, right, with Call of Duty, but people recognize with like COD 4, World at War, Modern Warfare 2, then you have Black Ops 1. Effectively, those games are essentially the same, right? Like, yeah, they did add more throughout the game, right? But they also were basically the same thing of perks, loadouts, weapon, your same kind of weapons. Uh, you also had a big campaign to go along with it. Your third mode, which is either Spec Ops or Zombies. People will start to refer to that as the COD fatigue, right? Where they start recognizing that a lot of these games are starting to look very similar to each other. And the only difference really being the era that the game is set in. So taking a note from the explosive expansion of the Call of Duty franchise, Bungie goes, how do we do loadouts and customization within multiplayer as well? Well, we got armor abilities, right? And various loadouts from starting in the casual matches, right? And it just didn't lend itself to good multiplayer experience. Oh, and uh, so you can't forget about Bloom, which people end up just hating so much, which I think was a good way to have a hit scan weapon, like the DMR as your primary weapon within the game, but not being able to just like beam people across the map, but you want it to be a laser beam that shoots across the map, right? Well, how do you balance that out? You kind of have to add Bloom. 
That's one thing I love about the Halo 3 battle rifle is that it has projectiles, slower projectile speed with it. So you have to lead your shots, right? So longer at distances, one, you would lose red relical range, so you'd lose the bullet magnetism and aim assist there. And when you're shooting beyond its intended range, and also you have to lead your shots, which makes it more difficult for a casual player to utilize and something you need to spend a lot of time in to be able to predict the, the, the lead shot you need to do to hit the headshot. Now Bungie would go ahead and make title update 1.1, which is a massive change overhaul to the multiplayer experience, changing the bloom, making it an 85% improved DMR. Like that is a massive change right there bleed through on the shields as well. That was a big thing. Fixed armor lock so it wasn't nearly as annoying. Reduced the active camo that you just were able to have as an armor ability, which felt kind of weird as well. Disabled the sword blocking, which felt really annoying if you're the sword user. Added in co-op campaign and firefight. Also creating the Halo CE pistol. This update really did save the multiplayer experience of Halo Reach. If this didn't happen, I think a lot more people would have dropped off and just giving up on the game completely because what was there at launch just didn't vibe with people. And I know a lot of people like to hold Halo 4 as the game that started following Call of Duty trends, but really it was Halo Reach. In fact, it was so rough when it comes to the settings in Halo Reach, just launch multiplayer, that the competitive gaming side of things, which were like competitive Halo was like competitive gaming back in the day. If you guys remember that, like Halo 3 competitive gaming MLG days, that was competitive gaming playing Halo 3. Then Reach comes out and effectively just like just demolishes the entire scene where then Halo 4 came out and put the nails in the coffin. Now when it comes to the multiplayer experience, we pretty much had all the same things we had previously, right? Competitive side of things, 4v4 Slayer, big team battle, infection, griff ball, and all that kind of stuff. But there were two main modes that were brought into Halo Reach, Headhunter and Invasion. Headhunter was a nice addition, I'd say. Uh, free for has never really been that popular of a mode, like even though people do like playing it, it's always been a lesser played mode within Halo because Halo's never really been a game about solo play, it's been more a game more about team play and working and coordinating with your teammates, so playing solo, it develops a different type of mentality and a lot of players don't change their mentality of how they play the game to adapt for how free-for-all really should be played. Hence why it's always been a lesser played mode within all of the Halo games out there. But one game mode that I completely slept on at the time was Invasion. At the time, I really just played Arena and 4v4 Slayer, and that was about it. That's how I enjoyed my Halo back in the day. I completely slept on Invasion. And then once Invasion came out on the Master Chief Collection on PC, I jumped in and played it. I was like, oh my God, how have I slept on this game mode for this long? Do you want to say it was a top 50 on PC when it came to Invasion? Yeah, that's my uh, one claim to fame, I guess. And the funny thing is that I actually really hate playing against elites in Halo's multiplayer as a whole. Like I'm actually one of those few people out there that will die on that hill saying that elites don't belong in multiplayer. Unless, unless, unless you're able to find a way to implement them into the game to make them stand out properly. And actually Reach's multiplayer does that pretty well, especially in the mode Invasion, where you have Spartans versus Elites. Elites have different types of weapons and different types of abilities compared to Spartans. They are have the much more human type weaponry and movements and things like that as well. It really gave you like a rock, paper, scissors type of experience, but in a somewhat big team battle mode, played very similar to say like Rush in the Battlefield series, and I absolutely fell in love with the game mode. And really Reach is the only Halo game I've ever played that I feel like that has done the difference between Elites and Spartans correctly. This video by Danger Squad really showcases how they actually played into the differences between Elites and Spartans. Elites are much bigger, right? But they actually can move faster than actual Spartans. I do believe they take one extra shot when it comes to like a needle rifle or DMR as well, uh, but it's just because they're an easier target to hit compared to a Spartan. Uh, the leads can jump higher. They actually made significant changes to these characters so that they actually have a gameplay effect to them rather than just being a person who wants to play as a dinosaur and then uses that as like a personality trait rather than actual uh, something that's meaningful to the gameplay. We also have to talk about the custom game experience. Custom games absolutely 
peaked with Halo Reach, right? With the improvements of Forge, making it much more of a map editor than originally thought to be just kind of something you can tweak maps with, right? Changing little spawns here and there, placing different weapons. But then people figured they can actually make maps in Halo 3. And then Bungie was like, okay, we'll give you that ability to do that. While the Forge palette wasn't exactly the most uh, entertaining thing out there, right? A lot of gray. It was a massive jump in improvements from Halo 3's Forge to actually make it a legitimate map editor, which for console at the time was unheard of. And I'm pretty sure this was the last Halo multiplayer that actually had a functioning theater mode because in halo infinite uh the, the theater mode is is not good first of all i just clicked into this match i played in this one but it starts on a different pov than what my actual pov was supposed to be which was this one right here and when you're just looking at it you can kind of see just how well just laggy the entire experience is how it doesn't really truly showcase how the gameplay was within the match there's like this weird jitter kind of thing. I don't know what changed really. They came to 343 making theater mode within uh, Halo, but my goodness, dude, like something needs to change because the genius of Bungie's theater mode was that it wasn't actually trying to record the gameplay that you were playing. What it did, it logged all the button presses everyone made within the match. So really, you're just booting into a simulation of what you actually played. It's not an actual recording, which allowed you to be able to zoom around the map, check out different POVs and things like that, which was honestly fantastic. And I see, I don't know what kind of systematic changes they made when it came to 343's version of, of theater, but like it really kind of became pointless to utilize. And that's one thing that I think really missed out because in Halo Reach, like people like took huge advantage of being able to utilize the theater mode so well that they were starting to make like full on movies of what utilizing the theater mode we call, you know, vital kept the, the uh, machinima was a huge thing in classic Halo experience. And granted, it was much more of like a classic YouTube thing as well, where you'd actually sit down and watch these machinimas because of how well they were made. And in Reach, like they just went full on, which is like the cinematography even you're able to create when it comes to playing Halo Reach, right? And be able to utilize theater mode and have it be an accurate representation of what happened within the game. Also, let's not forget about the amazing like file share system where you can just share clips with people. You can actually have jump people, your friends jump into your theater mode and watch the clip with you in real time. Like that was just fun. Like, oh my God, watch this insane extermination I hit guys. And Firefight was also just a like, great addition, right? It took what ODST did great and also expanded upon it to be really like the best version of Firefight we've had in the Halo franchise. It hurts to say that, but it's true. I know I'm gonna kind of glaze over the topic of Firefight, but really it's just like, you remember ODST's Firefight, but just being able to do more things in it. That's basically what they did with Reach, and that was great. Now when it comes to the community reception of Halo Reach, right? When the game first came out, it was absolutely hated on. And I think nowadays it's looked back as like a golden child if not part of that original Bungie era of just great game after great game. Uh, like I mentioned earlier in this video, the Halo cycle, very much a real thing, guys. If you don't know what I'm talking about, effectively, this is what the Halo cycle is. You have these three statements of simply fantastic principle of the series. It's downhill ever since then. Back in 2007, what I'm saying here, it's like right here, you can see, this is what they said about CE back in 2007. In Halo 2, people would say, that in retrospect, it wasn't as bad as originally thought. It was some great ideas, but not executed that well. And then whatever the current game is, F this game, multiplayer is trash, and the campaign is broken, rip, Halo. And effectively, the Halo cycle repeated itself after that, where just add the new game in, and you had the same statements down below, but th this is what Reach really did feel like when it came out. I know I'm sure many people watching this video we're probably too young to remember what it was like, what Reach was when it first came out in the reception by the community, but I was there. I've been playing Halo since 2001, guys. Like I've been on the ground floor since then. <laughs> and this is definitely was the feeling of Reach back in the day. Then t Halo 4 comes out and everyone goes like, oh, Reach actually wasn't that bad. Then Halo 5 comes out and everyone goes, you know what, Halo Reach was an absolute masterpiece of a game. Especially now with Infinite, right? 
Even Halo 4 is starting to get that treatment of simply fantastic and like a core aspect of the game uh, franchise. Obviously not the extent of what Halo Reach has gone through. I think there will uh, forever be Halo 4 Halo haters, including myself. Uh, but you can see that the cycle continues and Reach is one of those games where we've truly got a chance to experience the full cycle of Halo games within the community. Overall, I'd say the long lasting legacy of Halo Reach is that it is still part of the Halo franchise that 343 is still striving to get to to this day. I remember when we saw blogs about Halo Infinite, I'm like, oh my God, we're getting Halo Reach level of customization, guys. Can you believe we're gonna get a feature that was so good 10 years ago that's finally coming in again, it's gonna come out in 2020. Oh man. Those were the nostalgic days back then, man. The amount of features and content that came with Halo Reach. Like I said, it was the most fully realized game I think Bungie has ever released. And a small part of Bungie was actually developing Destiny 1 during Reach's development, which is insane to think about. I would say though, Halo Reach is arguably probably the third most liked Halo game within the entire franchise. You can make the argument that's better than C. Some of you even made the argument that it is the best Halo game ever made, which I think it's a little bit far of a step right there to make, but I can see where they're coming from. What are your thoughts on Halo Reach? Let me know in the comments down below. I might even make a response video to your guys' comments about Halo Reach, because you know, it's, it's a controversial game, right? It has some good parts, it has some bad parts for sure that we talked about within this video. If you guys made it this far in this long-winded video, make sure to leave a green heart. I wanna know who the real ones are out there in the comments. If you guys made any content from me recently, check out these videos right here, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace out.